My name is Tiffany Garner and I love looking at and admiring mushrooms. I've been a long time hiker and nature lover and within the last couple of years I really got into not only just photographing mushrooms but actually looking for edible ones. I'm currently doing a an internship and apprenticeship with Wildcraft Studio Schools and then in the spring I'll be a full-on forage instructor for Wildcraft Studios. In the spring and the fall, I try to go mushroom hunting every single weekend. Every chance I get, I am out uh, in the field. And this fall, especially with my apprenticeship program, I have had a mushroom hunt almost every single weekend for the last like two months. This is a fun one. It's called Xylaria, and it just grows like it's all black. And then this is the spore bearing surface. And sometimes, sometimes if it's the right time, you can see a little tiny poof of spores. Uh, but I love this one just because it's super weird. And I love the name Xylaria. That is probably a lactarius and it's called a bird's nest fungi. Actually, the white fuzzy is another fungus taking over. It's parasitizing the original fungus. This might have been an amanita. And in the fall, we get a lot of coral mushrooms. So all of that white stuff is the mycelium. I mean, there's just so many mushrooms that can be in one little square foot area. And even if you don't know exactly what they are, it just helps to start looking at them and getting your eyes used to seeing them and finding them. My name is Charlie Wicker. I recently discovered mushrooms and sort of a lot of health benefits related to them. I kind of don't do things halfway, so I went out and got myself um, some mushroom bricks and various powders to grow mushrooms in my house. I just wanted to see what it would be like to, to, to watch that happen, observe the the, the speed in which things you know, produce. So I have four. They're mostly culinary, so they're all about you know, tasting good and that kind of thing. Lion's Mane is the one that's supposed to have a lot of uh, benefits in terms of memory and recall, Alzheimer's related stuff. So that's, that was intriguing for me because my short-term memory is terrible. And so the other three, uh, oyster mushrooms, which are just delicious, shiitake, which we all know, and then finally the uh, chestnut mushroom. I've eaten shiitake in restaurants and, and new seasons and all, all the fancy stores where you can buy organic, fresh produce and all that. And the mushrooms that I had that I made were, I'd say, twice as good as the best mushrooms I've ever had. There's a term in the mushroom world called pick shaming. And that's where people will um, say, hey man, why did you pick that mushroom if you're not going to eat it? And they're implying that it's somehow bad for the environment or somehow bad for the mushroom to do that, but it's not. The, the roots of the mushroom are called the mycelial network, and that is just in the ground. It's everywhere. Uh, oftentimes people will compare it to an apple tree. So the tree is the mycelial network, and then the mushroom is the fruit, is the apple off the tree. And by picking the apple, you're not harming the tree. And in fact, it's important to pick mushrooms because you need to get a good look at them. You can't ID a mushroom unless you can see the underside of it. And sometimes you need to see what the stem looks like. Sometimes the stem changes color and that's part of the ID factor of the mushroom. And it's good to smell them, like get really close to them and smell them or take them home and study them. So it's totally okay to pick a mushroom. Also, it's not even if it was a poisonous mushroom, it's not gonna seep through your skin. You're totally fine to touch mushrooms. Just wash your hands when you get home. I've 
grabbed a few powders from a, a local place that sources very high end uh, mushroom powders. So they extract using water and alcohol. And I don't know how that magic happens, but at the end of it, you got a concentrated dose of whatever that mushroom is. They're related to high energy and uh, vitality, that kind of thing. So those are, and they taste terrible. You wanna have those blended into something uh, delicious. I find that chocolate is an excellent medium. So using, uh, basically making like a, a, a drinking chocolate or um, like a hot chocolate sort of deal would be just the, uh, it's a great way to make it so that's a little bit hidden and get the health benefits from it. These things are kind of like very low risk. You're not gonna um, cause harm to your liver or anything like that. It's, it's, it's fun to see what it does and, uh, and I always need more energy. I've got stuff to do and I you know, could stand to always have more, more brain power. You know, when I wanna go to sleep, I wanna sleep, so I'd sleep more deeply. All the things that make, make life richer, I wanna have those things. The best way to prepare actually most mushrooms is to dry saute them. You cut them up and you put them in a dry skillet, no oil, and you cook them down so they release their moisture first. And as soon as you'll see, like it starts bubbling up, some of them have a lot of water in them. And so you started with this dry pan and suddenly have a bunch of water in, um, in your pan and you just let that cook off. And as soon as they look like they're gonna maybe start sticking to the pan, that's when you would add your fat or your butter or your oil and then garlic. And a lot of wild mushrooms are just best served with a little bit of butter and garlic. It's the best way to eat them. My name is Dan Grill. I'm the executive chef of Screen Door Restaurant. Right now we're showing you how to cook chanterelle mushrooms. Just thyme, butter, and salt, you know? Nothing much, nothing to it because you don't wanna, again, you're just not trying to mask what's delicious, you know? I ask like five times before I eat a mushroom. Um, I would pick mushrooms, take pictures of the mushrooms, all the angles of the mushroom, not just the top, take a picture of it in the ground, take a picture of it in your hand, the top, the bottom, and I would send it out to like my three top mushroom people that I trust. And even then when they all gave me the go ahead, yep, that is what it is, I still didn't eat it the first couple of times. Honestly, a lot of people get sick off of mushrooms, not because they've picked the wrong one, but because they've eaten too much of it. Um, some of our bodies are just not used to eating these foraged foods. And then also you have to remember you're cooking it with butter and it's really delicious. And so oftentimes people have upset stomach, but it's simply because they ate too much butter. And another hot tip is to save one of those mushrooms. Don't cook it, leave it in the fridge. And if you do have some kind of weird stomach reaction, you have a mushroom to show the doctor like, this is what I ate, instead of trying to describe it. The fear of getting it wrong is, is very high and the chances of eating a poisonous mushroom is really not that high. There are plants, people will go foraging for berries and take risks there, but in the, in the same world of mushrooms, people are afraid. So for some reason, mushrooms have a, a greater a fear coefficient. That said, I wouldn't mess around with any anything you're not completely sure about. Mushroom hunters, um, when they're looking for edible mushrooms and they find a spot, that is secret. Like my chanterelle spot, we found that just by doing research, figuring out what elevation the mushrooms were gonna be at possibly, and then literally driving around at that elevation. I had my map open and when I saw like a green, like nature area, you just go in and look around. And that's how we found our chanterelle spot and that is Top secret, we don't tell anybody where it's at. There's an old guy. This is what a lot of them are looking like these days. It's getting pretty towards the end of the season, so he's getting a little moldy, which is funny because that's another fungus growing on the fungus. Um, so that's always kind of interesting, but makes it makes it a little difficult to like ID them. It's just so exciting when you start seeing mushrooms on the forest floor. It's a total game changer. Uh, one of my favorite parts about leading mushroom forages is when there's people in the class that have never, ever, ever gone hunt mushroom hunting. And as soon as you get them out there and start pointing out the mushrooms, 
just to watch their faces go, whoa, I had no idea there were so many out here. And like, oh, they're there, they're there. And it's it's really exciting. It's like the forest floor is suddenly unveiled and they can see so much. It gives you a huge appreciation for what's out there. Mushrooms are so important to me because it gets me outside. It gives me a reason to go outside and get into nature. And um, I really love being able to see the seasons change. And it gives you an appreciation for the, the little tiny things out there. And, and a reminder that those green spaces we have, like Forest Park, like they are a treasure. In this ever-growing city with all of these huge apartment complexes coming up, it's so important to keep those sacred green spaces so that everybody can enjoy them.